with the Oceana pack coming out very soon, um, I've been thinking about what the last pack for this for this year could be, and I've got various other ideas, but this is one of about three that I will be doing as separate videos. So this is the Highlands pack, a pack I've been thinking about for a long time since the start of the year, as you would have seen in my very first video on the channel. Um, so this is a pack based around the highlands and mountains of the world, with various different animals from respective mountain ranges. So let's not waste any more time and get started. So the first animal is the Markhor, a large goat species from the Western Himalayas and Central Asia. Males are distinct with their large spiral horns, which in the folklore of its na native countries refers to their portrayal as a snake eater. Given their distinct look, they would make a great headliner for a pack such as this, as goats and sheep are re referenced heavily with Highlands landscapes and are very marketable, as it would be a great um, bit of key art just having a magnificent male mark horse standing looking over a great valley. So that is one of many animals that will be in this video. <laughs> Next up we have the Wolverine which is the second choice for um, the headliner of the pack. So they are the largest terrestrial mustelid found across the Northern Hemisphere and up beyond the Arctic Circle. They are good on the ground, but also great climbers too. Their strong jaws and muscles allow them to take down animals much larger than themselves, such as deer and reindeer. Despite its newfound place at number one on the meta, the Wolverine isn't as recognizable or marketable as something like a magnificent goat, such as the Markor as some people may not even know what the Wolverine is. Hugh Jackman certainly didn't. Next on the list is, the, is Africa's highest living primate, the Gelada or Gelada baboon, found in the highlands of Ethiopia where it feeds almost exclusively on grass. I'm picking them over the Hamadryas baboon simply down to personal preference and that it looks cooler and more unique. Male gelatas have large manes of hair with a long mantle that forms a sort of cape that is draped over their shoulders and upper back. Both males and females have a red hourglass shape on their chest, and males in a display of aggression will flick their lip up to expose enormous canines. So they're, they're just a cool species, and also were featured in the African Adventure DLC for Zoo Tycoon 2. So they have a bit of um, carried liberty there, and they just, yeah. As I said, they look pretty cool. So um, let me know what you think. Um, the Sichuan Tarkin is a large goat antelope from the Sichuan province in the People's Republic of China, where it inhabits dense montane forests that it shares with the iconic giant panda. Tarkin have large horns and resemble a cow in many ways, but are in fact related to sheep. This is one of two Tarkin options I have for this pack. The other being the beautiful golden tarkin. This species of tarkin is found from the Chinling Mountains, home of another giant panda subspecies called the Chinling Panda. All tarkin have backwards facing horns, which are very useful when traversing dense forests so not to get caught up on vegetation and tree branches. Both are interchangeable as they both serve very similar purposes. If if you've been to San Diego Zoo, you may have seen the Golden Tarkin before, and if you've been to most other zoos in the US and around the world, Sichuan Tarkin may be your most recognisable. But um, whichever Tarkin is yours, um, we'll see what we get in the official pack. The next animal comes from South America with the Spectacle Bear. This is the only bear that lives in South America, dwelling in the cloud forest among the Great Andean Mountain Range. They do... They do occasionally wander out onto the plateaus, but mostly when searching for mates or for new, or for new residents. Their distinct markings on their faces make them an eye-catching candidate for this pack, giving players not just South America's only bear, but the last descendant of the great short-faced bears, the land's largest mammalian carnivores that went extinct at the end of the Pleistocene. So they are one of the Andes' most distinct animals. We got the llama in the South America pack, but Spectacle Bear would be a great addition nonetheless. We do have plenty of bears, but this one um, is actually pretty high on the meta. I think 10th um, on the meta now. So it will come into the game no matter what. Moving over to Papua New Guinea comes the pack's most bizarre inclusion. With its exclusion from the Oceana pack, the Goodfellas tree kangaroo has now got a, 
a bit, little bit of a loophole, which is the fact they live on the island's high, live in the island's highlands, which makes the tree kangaroo a suitable candidate for this pack. But the Goodfellows is not the only tree kangaroo that is from the highlands of New Guinea. The other being the popular uh, Matsy's tree kangaroo, which is still requested by the community um, as well, particularly for the American players, given their represent representation in US zoos. Like the Goodfellows, they live in highlands, but they also share very similar appearances aside from a few key differences like the pale faces and ear tips that make this species look distinct from its relative. Whichever one we get, either would be a great animal to see in the game and both fill a similar purpose and a similar niche. So whichever tree kangaroo we get, like the Tarkin, um, yeah, they'll both fill a, a similar role. The golden pheasant is a colourful bird from the highlands of western China, found in similar areas to that of the giant pandas, Tarkin, and red panda. Males have a bright array of colours, mixes of reds, oranges, greens, blues, and yellows give this bird a distinct appearance. But this is just one of two colourful birds that live in the highlands of Asia that I've considered. The other being the Himalayan Manal, with its metallic colours and feathers, their, their bright colours make them another eye-catching bird species that can be added to the game. Either of these colourful birds could be added as they both serve as very similar additions. Like many other alternatives, they, whichever one we get, players would probably um, get the same use out of each of them. So um, Himalayan Manal is just another consideration. The exhibit animal for the pack is the Chinese giant salamander, the largest amphibian in the world dwelling in montane, cold flowing rivers that have been threatened by human encroachment, pollution, and the salamander particularly by over-exploitation for the luxury food markets in China. Given their size, they would require larger exhibits, which would hopefully be added as an update feature alongside this DLC. So, um, yeah, I was thinking of this because we could be seeing... Um, a sort of pattern with the exhibit animals where we go walk through exhibit, regular exhibit, walk through exhibit, regular exhibit. So that's what we saw this year with the brown throated sloth of the tropical pack, the, the desert horned viper in the arid animal pack, and the spectacle flying fox coming in the Oceana pack. And so a regular exhibit animal would be due. So um, we'll see what happens, but the Chinese giant salamander is my top pick. Um, Beginning the list of possible alternatives um, is the Hamadryas baboon. This species is high on the meta and would fill the slot of the gelada if it were not chosen, being found on cliffs and in highlands of Africa and the Middle East, making them a viable candidate. A good species to be included, given their similarity in size and behaviour to that of the arid animal pack sand cat, the palace's cat of the Himalayas and plateaus of Tibet and Central Asia, would be a great species given their relevance to highlands and if the pack were to go with just one undulate rather than a few more because i'm pretty sure people still have undulate fever from the arid animal pack um either the tarkin or markle could be substituted out or the tree kangaroo could be benched for a bit longer to make way for this cool little cat another north american species um, would be the mountain goat another non-capri non-goat caprine i mean like the Tarkin, that would make a good addition to represent the Rocky Mountains and Cliffs of North America. Their white fur would make them another distinct animal in the rocky landscape of the mountains. Another non-goat that lives at high altitudes is the muskox, a large herbivore from the Arctic Circle that would be able to fit in the pack like this, but given their largely tundra-bound habitat, they are one of the lesser alternatives in my selection. Another species of South America is the wild camelid, the guanaco, a species found in various habitats in western South America, along the Mandia, Mandian, Andean mountain range and the plateaus where they graze, as well as the coastal regions of the Atacama Desert. Their distinct coloration from the llama would make them a good addition, as well as their calls, which are very distinct. An alternative is the vicuña, a species that is known for having the most valuable wool in the world. Distinct from the guanaco in size, as well as a fluffier patch on their chest. Another montane duo is that of the yaks of Central Asia. The domestic yak is the most viable of these two, as they have been successfully kept in captivity worldwide. It would be interesting to see how Frontier would do the yaks hanging hair, 
the colour variation as well of the domesticated yaks would make it one of the most colourful bovines in the game. Alternative, alternatively, the wild yak is not very common in captivity or it does not exist at all in zoos. But they are bigger and more valuable from a cons conservation standpoint. It would be interesting to get one of the yaks, at least one. One of the more unique alternatives is that of the rock hyrax from Africa and the Middle East. They are found in many countries, making them versatile for different zoos. Despite their appearance, hyraxes are closely related to elephants. They would be great for various exhibits, but I feel they are one of the lesser alternatives for this pack, given they are mostly found on coffees and uh, just hillsides and st stuff like that. Not really too much highlands, but they, they, would, fit the, they would fit the bill anyway. The final animal consideration for this pack is New Zealand's Kia, one of the few alpine parrots in the world and one of the most intelli intelligent birds in the world. They are found on the South Island in the mountains and would be a cool addition for the walkthrough exhibit. Um, they would be one of the more unique walkthrough exhibit animals, but given the track record for possible walkthrough exhibit birds, it does seem unlikely. But um, that is my idea for what could be a very good pack. Let me know how you would arrange this pack. Personally, for me, I would go the Markor, the Wolverine, the Sichuan Tarkin, the Gelada, Spectacle Bear, the Golden Pheasant, um, the Chinese Giant Salamander, and what else? Uh, oh, I've forgotten what animals I was listening to now. <laughs> uh, the... Uh, now, now I'm left to think here. Okay. Wolverine, Tarkin, Markor, Spectacle Bear, Gelada, Chinese Giant Salamander, Golden Pheasant, and there was one more. Uh, Palace's Cat? <laughs> oh yeah, Tree Kangaroo was in there. But I feel like the Palace's Cat would, would be better for the pack, and Tree Kangaroo can come down the line. But let me know how you would order this pack. If you liked the video, um... Do leave a like down below, and if you want to see more DLC speculation in just one video, um, subscribe and you'll get all sorts of new videos coming out very soon with the release of the Oceana pack. But as always, I can only make videos when I can. Um, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video, which will likely be when the Oceana pack release. I know I've said this before, but... Um, restating it because the Oceana pack is very close. Tasmanian Devil, here we come.